Every year in the NFL, it's a new team. As far as goals go, we have one. Putting a ring on our finger. Welcome to the Buccaneers Observer Podcast. This is Ralph Phillips. I'm Molly Bay. Today is September, what is the day, the 10th? 10th. 10th, September 10th. Negative one day from kickoff. Victory <laughs> Friday. Victory fucking Friday. Hell yeah. Hello. I just came out of the gate cussing. Kind of I murmured know. that under. I was like, fricking, 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 fricking. <laughs> Guys, we won. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. The Not whole, quite the blowout we were expecting. Yeah, the whole fact check and follow up segment is going to be the whole podcast segment because it's going <laughs> to be us fact checking and following up our horrendous or more my horrendous uh, estimation. Dude, but you we won. like hyped it up. Oh my god, I'm the hype man. Yeah, hype we, man. we are the conductors That's of the hype true. train over That's here. That's true. But you know that the suspense makes it a little more engaging and. We'll just go with that. Which suspense? In the game, all the stress. <laughs> it was an entertaining game. It was you certainly entertaining. I thought we lost. I thought we lost at the with like five minutes left. Oh yeah, that like, Chris oh Godwin God, fumble. That's where I was yes. like, oh my mm-hmm. god, I want to die. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and then they went down the field, kicked the field goal. Well. Actually, yeah, when they kicked the field goal, that's when I was like, ooh, we might get this because we're getting the ball back with a minute and a half left. And sure enough, we just... And it's Tom Brady. It's Tom Brady. So that's what we did. And I ain't mad about it. Now, I am am a little upset that we didn't uh, buzzsaw him, you know, just rip him to pieces. I expected... A less competitive game. Mm. I do like a competitive game, though. I like right, a good yeah, game. Yeah, always. That's what we got to remember. Right. It's hard to keep this in mind, but this is all about fun and entertainment. It doesn't feel like it most of the time, but it was a very entertaining game. Now the the ratings came in for it. They had twenty six million, I think, is and that's viewership over all their platforms. You know, like Peacock Plus and. Online streaming, all that good stuff. Twenty six million, most they've ever had for an opening night game since two thousand fifteen. <laughs> <laughs> they, they made it out like it was. This is the Big most we ever had deal. since two thousand fifteen against the the Steelers and the Patriots. I think it was. Wow. Yeah. Well, two thousand fifteen, six years ago. Since the last time Tom Brady was. Opening night. Oh, on opening night. That's right. They're always opening night. You know, I we, know. The, the the 2003 Buccaneers, or the 2002 Buccaneers that won the Super Bowl, you know, I complained about how we didn't get as many, as much accolades uh, mm-hmm. afterwards. Uh, we are the only team that, since the modern Super Bowl era, that didn't open the season. Every other winning Super Bowl team opens the season. Yeah, we didn't open the season, and we didn't get, you know, home field advantage. Of course, if you don't open the season, what? yeah, it was one of those robbery. Yeah, we we are the redheaded stepchildren of the league, man. But it was great. I was watching all the analysts the day before, and the day of, you know, NFL Network and ESPN, all these guys. I was I was cruising around and seeing what they were all saying. And Pat McCaffrey, you know, how did he become in in what a year or so he has become almost the go-to nfl guy because he knows all the players he knows and all they the players. come on his show they would much rather come on his show than any of those bullshit nfl channel shows it like is much you do more those free. yeah it's more free and fun and they're more comfortable because he's one of them mm-hmm and it's fun. I like I like the banter with all the guys that goes on. This is yeah, guys it's just a little out. yeah. It's like a I don't you know. It's it's kind of like that feel with a bunch of guys mm-hmm. bullshitting. You know, like Howard Stern used to be, or yes. any of the well, I mean, any of yeah. those style show. I mean, mm-hmm. Joe Rogan used to be like oh, mm-hmm. any of those style shows where it's just a bunch of dudes in a room together. Mm-hmm. That's kind of what you get. But then you compare that with like Colin Coward or uh, uh, Joseph A. Smith or Max Kellerman, and it's just so they're so stale. I know. You know compared I can't to stand them. Pat McCaffrey, it, yeah, it's a, it's a, he's got a really good show, 
He's a very good entertainer. I love Pat McAfee because was he the punter or the kicker? Yes, punter. Kicker. Punter. Pretty sure he was a punter. Okay. Yeah, yeah, I think so. But you think of a punter like as I don't know, like they're th- usually the smallest guys on the team. Uh, they're not as in shape as all the other guys, and he is like a solid looking yeah. dude, <laughs> he's a big and dude. he's big. Uh-huh. Yeah, and it's just he looks like a frat guy, and he talks like a frat guy. Yeah, it is, is a like a big yeah. frat party every episode. Yeah, he's fun. He uh, he's got a real great presence about him. You know, it's fun to. Uh, you could tell he's the kind of guy that is just would was fun, super fun to have in the locker room. Yeah, you know, and hanging out when it's boring and you're just standing around. He's just he's nonstop talking, man. He just he's a good storyteller too. Very good storyteller. Yes, and a good I, beer chugger. I tell you what, he cracked me up. I about spit beer out my nose when him and Peyton Manning were talking the other day. Peyton Manning was on the way to the uh, Hall of Fame ceremony, right? Mm-hmm. And he had a, a bunch of people were in the back of the bus or something. But it, <laughs> he comes out and Peyton Manning, you know, takes a picture real quick while he's doing a live stream with Pat McCaffrey just BSing about all this stuff. And he takes a picture real quick. And that was hilarious because it was so – they both were just like, yeah, go ahead and take your picture. So he took his picture. But Pat McCaffrey yeah, was Pat laughing because he kept like the stream going. Yeah, was sentence He was like, go ahead and take your picture. Like he's talking to Peyton Manning and Peyton just stops and he's like, you yeah. know, putting his arm around the, whoever he's next to and yeah, posing. Yeah. But he's got the phone like out here with the – so he's still on camera. But what cracked me up is they were talking about Tom Brady and – Pat McCaffrey asked Peyton Manning about how Tom Brady is so good. And, you know, Peyton Manning is just hilarious. He's a funny dude, and he's a great talker. He's one of the best talkers. That guy, I used to love watching his press conferences because he would just talk. You ask him, they they were lucky to get two or three questions in on him because as soon as they asked him a question, he was off. He was going, and he would talk the whole time. He talked five minutes on one question. Can you see Jenna Lane in a press conference with him? <laughs> It'd be a battle between who could talk the longest. <laughs> who could tell the longest story? <laughs> oh, he would win. He would win. But he said uh, they were talking about Tom Brady, why Tom Brady was so good. And he was like, it's just amazing what he's done down there. He went in. He learned a new offense and blah, blah, blah. And he was just giving all these praises. And then he goes, and then he cheated and went in and met with By- Byron Leftwich when he was supposed to. He said illegally. Illegally. He broke into yeah. Byron Leftwich's house. Yeah, he just threw that in there. And it, it, I, I laughed so damn hard. Those two rib each other constantly, Tom mm-hmm. Brady and Peyton Manning. They got a great relationship. So anyhow, found that that quite Interesting. So, any anyway, I'm watching the all the analysts and the, the pre shows and all this for a good day before the game. I was just amped up, and the the betting line went from seven, you know, bucks plus seven, all the way up to nine. I mean, that's a huge spread, and you know, it's it was mainly because all these guys, everybody was on TV just talking about, oh man, the Buccaneers are going to rip the. Dallas. There wasn't anybody I saw that said Dallas even had a chance. <laughs> and I was like, yeah, yeah, I okay. like this. Okay, so it was wasn't great. just us that was totally wrong. No, but I didn't hear anybody saying that until we started saying it. Yeah. And then I'm like, man, who the hell's listening to our podcast and spreading Everybody, this around? Everybody, they all do. We do notice that. A lot of stuff we say gets out there somehow, mm-hmm. some way. That's true. So there's some important people in high places listening to this. Just want to let y'all know that. And if it's you, thanks. Hello. Hi. We see you. <laughs> Not that y'all all aren't important. We all have our own special place in the world. That's right. That's right. <laughs> so, yeah, you, you just want to get back, get, just dive right into the game. I just want to dive right into it. Let's go. Now, we I, were debating whether to even do this tonight because well, we're both very tired. We're both very tired. And I don't have access to any. All 22. Oh, gosh. It hasn't come out. Yeah. You, you got to tell the story, Ralph. Which Go one? Off. Which Go one? Off. The one you told me earlier about huh. trying to deal with the the broadcast version. Yeah. So so anyhow, they get the broadcast version up. And I'm like, okay, well, I'm going to spend the day and sit down and watch this and take notes, get ready for the podcast. And I start watching it, and they got damn commercials in it. 
Now, normally what they had done, what they've done since they've had this, is they take out all the damn commercials. So you get a four-hour game, three and a half hours, whatever, and you take out all the commercials and all the BS, and it's about an hour and a half. You, you know, you still get the the commentators and the, the all that good stuff. It's the full game, but without commercials. And that takes it down to... Uh, <clears throat> And that takes it down to about an hour and a half. It goes from three and a half hours to an hour and a half. So I'm thinking, okay, I'll be able to sit down and I'll watch this in an hour and a half, maybe two hours, you know, for pausing it. And they've taken it out, taken out the ability to go play by play. It used to, they would have the list of the plays over in a sidebar. And if you wanted to watch 308 in the fourth quarter, you could just click on that and it would take you to 308 in the fourth quarter. They've removed all that. Uh, they don't even have the where you could slow it down. You used to be able to have a button you could press to replay it slowly. And so they've taken all these features away. So I'm like, all right, okay, I'm just going to sit down and watch the game again. They just put the game up there with commercials and everything. I am i don't want to watch the commercials. <laughs> There's no way I paid all this money to sit there and watch the same commercials twice. It'd be different if it was different commercials. Although I, I will have to hand it to the NFL or the commercial people this year. They had some funny damn commercials. The commercial people. There was co the commercial people. <laughs> the commercials were funny. You know, we've been complaining about this for years and how commercials have just gotten awful. Dead you know, serious. Everything and saved the world. And, you know, yeah. Look, this dog has cancer. Great. I, know. I don't want to see that. No. Mm -hmm. uh, if I do want to see it, I'll go someplace to find it. But I don't want it thrown in my face all the time. Mm -hmm. So, anyhow, they had some funny commercials. But I don't want to watch them over. I don't want to watch them again. And there's no way to fast forward through this because if you, if they got a 10 second fast forward, right? So you can skip 10 seconds. Although it takes about eight and a half seconds for the video to catch up. So it really doesn't do you anything. You press it, and it'll go, it'll be a, you know, spinning wheel. Mm -hmm. you know, and then it'll, after about They're eight gonna seconds. They're going to make you spend those 10 seconds yeah. one way or another. Right. And, uh, but if you do that like four times, if you sit there and you press the button like four times and skip 40 seconds ahead, then the video just stops and the page refreshes and starts you over from the beginning. So I was aggravated as hell. I got through 30 minutes and that's all I could do. I was like, I, there's no way I'm going to sit here for three and a half, four hours watching this again. So what you get is a very detailed description of the first 30 minutes. That's going to be this podcast. <laughs> and what Ralph remembers from... Being drunk last night. Yeah, it's not going to be a whole lot. <laughs> and I haven't watched it either, so mine are also my. Yep. They don't have the condensed notes. version up. I, I waited all day. Normally they have the condensed version up about four hours after the live version or the broadcast version goes up. And normally they would have the broadcast version up like within an hour of the game with all the commercials cut out. So I don't know if they made a deal with their advertisers to say, hey, you know, we'll not we'll only... force people to watch this shit again. Yeah, we'll keep this in the replay. So now people have to watch your your commercials in perpetuity. You know, you're like, what in the world? It's, it's really horrible. They've done an absolutely horrible job with Game Pass this year. Absolutely horrible. And if they don't get that all 22 up there, they are getting a strongly worded email from me. Oh, we had somebody say you should just shoot it off. Like, don't even give them the two weeks. Just send it. This just is do nonsense. It. Just do it. Peer pressure. Yeah. Do it. it. I'm surprised there aren't more people up in arms over it. Everybody's just kind of like, they're not going to bring it back, are they? Yeah. Yeah. They're just going to quietly go out into the night. <laughs> well, I wonder if they even have the competency to get it back. Yeah. Yeah. How in the world are they going like, to do? Like, I just feel like they're completely incompetent. If they do all 22 like they're doing this, where you can't skip around from play to play, that's going to be useless. I would never watch all 22 on a tablet or a phone because you can't do it there. You know, the, the list of plays was not available. So I, I wouldn't watch it. I always watch it on my computer. But now, if they do it this way, it seems like, man, they are just being so slack and lazy. I don't know if they've hired a new company to do it yeah. it's like people who don't actually use the service yeah right yeah like they have no idea why people even like it or what they get out of it yes you are correct 
which seems to be like most developers or yeah. people that don't have any, they, they never use their product. Exactly. Now, if you're a drug dealer, they say don't ever use your product. But I think if you're mm -hmm. a somebody working with customer service, you know, like, you know, like if you, if you work at McDonald's and you make the Big Mac, you need to eat a Big Mac to see if it's taste okay. Well, you know, right. I think that applies to drug dealers, too. They should definitely <laughs> try their product. <laughs> you would. I would. <laughs> I mean. But, I, you know, I don't know. I'd get somebody else that likes drugs to try it for me. Hi. Be like, here, let me know. <laughs> 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 Same thing could be said about Big Macs, right? I, yes, you, you absolutely. You're like, I would. Hopefully both at the same time. <laughs> Give me the drugs and the Big Macs. Same time. It tastes better. <laughs> all right come on so Let's, much for a kid don't don't do drugs kids i know stay exactly. in school or no what is it uh stay in drugs don't do don't do school that's right exactly yeah same thing okay so to this game what do you got what are your what are your thoughts okay i have a total of six notes from the game i mm. will go through point by Damn. point you took notes <sighs> briefly uh, I think about midway through the third quarter, I was like, oh, I got to write this stuff down. You know what inspired me to write I, things down? I do not remember you writing notes down. Yeah, because it was just a second. Okay. I just kind of brain dumped everything and going on up here, and then that was it. Hmm. Uh, the first thing that um, inspired me to write things down was, uh, did they sedate Bruce Arians before this game? Because yeah. he was just, every time the camera was on him, it was just this. Mm, like dead yeah. serious. Mm. No, he wasn't even getting mad at the refs. I know that was that's, very strange. That is what what made me real. What made me think about it because these refs were freaking horrible. Horrible. They were so bad. Garbage. Complete and total garbage. We had eleven penalties for a hundred and six yards. The Bucks did. Good grief! They did. The Cowboys only had eight for 55 yards. So we like doubled their penalty yardage. Damn. I don't remember that bad. Poof. Yeah, it was awful. Yeesh. And they picked on Jamel Dean. Mm. He kept getting these pass interference calls. How many did he get? I don't know. It I, was I remember just... one big one. Yeah, yeah, he did not have a good game. He, he didn't play that well last year, I didn't think. You know, as not, well as we wanted to see him play. Right, I thought he should have taken a step up last year, and he kind of just, he, I would say, even got worse a little bit. And if he stays on this trajectory, <laughs> I don't know, man. He just, he's, not, he's not out there playing. And they say he's a very uh, stoic type dude. You know, he doesn't mm -hmm. let things bother him and all that stuff. But he's got to play with a little bit more passion, I think. Yeah, he seems a little inconsistent to me. And he, now he made he a couple plays of good plays. Uninspired, I would say. He, like he's not a yeah, hype guy. Like right. SMB hype guy all the way. Right, Winfield hype guy. Yeah. Yes, uh, Carlton Davis hype guy. Yeah. Uh, the, but the thing of it, it is, you know, we can't really say a whole lot about any of this because we don't have the all twenty-two. You yeah. Know, you cannot judge secondary guys based on broadcast you can't do it you just can't do it i don't that's why i hate pro football focus because they do it or they claim to do it you can't do you it you can't do it you can't do it if you don't have the all 22 you cannot judge anybody in the secondary you can't do it sorry it's just how it is because so much stuff changes back there and moves around especially our system yeah yeah you know, I mean, sometimes you can see a broadcast version and you can see a guy following a guy, you know, playing man coverage or whatever. And you go, OK, well, you know, he screwed up there or he got beat or whatever. But generally, overall, nah, you can't you can't judge the secondary based on the broadcast. And then you never even know. You might watch the all 22 and you see everybody else is playing zone except for that guy who's playing <laughs> You know, man coverage, you go, oh, he screwed up. He wasn't supposed to be in man coverage. <laughs> that's what the problem was. And then that's pretty obvious at yeah. that point. Yeah, pretty obvious. The It was a little scary, the injuries to the secondary. Oh, my so Let's gosh. talk about that. Okay, Sean Murphy <sighs> Bunting's arm. Well, I cannot believe they're saying that he might come back. Yes, Bruce Arians came out and said that it was a dislocated elbow, which shocked the 
mess out of me. You could see bone, like I, right yeah. underneath the skin. It was so bad. His elbow was like the wrong direction. Like it does not go that way. It was friendly fire, right? With yes, Winfield. Winfield. Mm-hmm. And there was a, that Dallas guy in there too. But it looked so awful. It looks so bad. And thank God we brought Andrew Adams up from the practice squad. No doubt. There was a there was a couple of us, Andrew Adams and Jaden Mickens, that they kind of just squeezed in yeah. there that nobody was expecting. Out of nowhere. We, we put uh, Jalen Darden, yeah. uh, inactivated him, and put brought Jaden Mickens up from the practice squad, brought Andrew Adams up from the practice squad. Now, where did we get the space to bring him up? Okay, so we had Jalen Darden, Kyle Trask, Keyshawn Vaughn, Jordan Whitehead, safety Chris Cooper, guard Nick Leverett, and defensive lineman Khalil Davis. They were all inactive. And then so we elevated Andrew Adams and Jaden Mickens. Damn. So you can have six inactive people on your squad? Yeah, we, we had seven. We had seven and after. I, you know, they, they keep changing all these damn rules. I can't keep up with any of them. Yeah. So, yeah, so we brought Andrew Adams up, thank God. Yeah. And uh, he played great, I thought. Yeah. You know, he was out there making plays. Well, and thank God that we had him because, mm-hmm. I mean, SMB, we had all these issues Edwards in our got secondary. Hurt. SMB Edward got hurt. Yeah. yeah. So thank God that we had all this secondary depth, mm-hmm. although I wasn't. It, it, I would definitely say of all of our depths, that's the weakest. Although I think in our preview, we're like, yeah, we got great depth in the secondary. Yeah, well, you miss, you're miss, you missing two people. And, cl- and then also Jordan Whitehead's are really three people. Oh, yeah, that's right. Yeah. It's uh, You get a little strained back there. And mm-hmm. gosh, mm-hmm. that injury to Sean Murphy Bontina was just. Yeah, I thought he woo. broke his forearm. Yeah. And it looked to me like it had snapped right before the elbow. Yeah. But then when Bruce Arians said that, I went back and watched it. That's actually where I stopped watching at the half hour mark on the thing because I, I wanted to get the, a video clip of that. And as soon as I did, I was like, okay, I can't do this anymore. I'm, I'm just going to stop uh, watching commercials. But you could, yeah, you could see it was just his elbow had come out. Okay. But I mean, it came out, out. It Ooh. was, it was out, out. <laughs> it wasn't, well, then you got to worry about ligaments and all that shit right. in there. Yeah. To, so, so he'll you know. probably be out for a couple of weeks. Right. But, I mean, at least it happened in the beginning of the season. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. we'll get him hopefully midway through. But Greg Allman tweeted out that this is the same injury that Jack Sitchi had last season. And he never came back from it. So Really? Yeah. Ooh. So we'll see. Mm-hmm. I don't know. BA uh, sounds hopeful, which gives me hope. But it looked awful on the broadcast. Yes. I concur. So we had the injuries to the secondary. I was going to oh the interceptions, Brady's two interceptions, neither one were his fault. And it is so annoying. You know, he said in that round table. He hates interceptions. He hates interceptions. He said nothing. He said, I could score like 90 touchdowns. And if I throw one pick, I'm pissed. Mm -hmm. And he had two. The one off of Leonard Fournette's hands. Mm -hmm. And then the other one was the Hail Mary. So neither one were his fault. But... It goes down on his sheet. It goes on his sheet. That's right. And then we had the Rojo fumble, too. Now, this was a little controversial because some people on Twitter felt like B.A. was punishing Rojo by sitting him on the sidelines and not giving him any more opportunities. Mm -hmm. After the fumble, they did put Leonard Fournette in, which didn't seem right because... Rojo fumbled, then Leonard Fournette caused the interception in the mm-hmm. next series. And so you're like, oh, someone's getting punished for causing a turnover. You would you would hope that the coaching staff would be consistent in that. But BA said today that it was not that Rojo was being punished, but that 
he mentally just could not get over the fumble, and you kind of saw it on the sideline. Like, he looked. Oh, he, he looked like he was going to cry. Yeah, yeah, he just did not. You know, he had the towel over his head. And other people had said, like, oh, B.A. is too hard on Rojo sometimes. I just don't get that sense from B.A. Like, B.A. is very much about meeting the players where they are. And from what we've heard about Rojo, he's very sensitive. Like, there's a story about him from USC where they talk about how he was growing up and he lost his father very early. And when he was young, he'd kind of hide behind his parents. Um, he was very shy and insecure and, you know, so he just wasn't. And so, oh, it was, um, Todd, wasn't it Todd McNair that said that the running backs coach, I think that's where that came from. And, so, to me, I feel like B.A. would not do that to Rojo knowing how Rojo is, knowing Rojo as a person and a player. I don't think that he would intentionally punish him because that's certainly not how you get production from someone who's like that. Mm-hmm. I think that it probably was just the case of mentally Rojo couldn't get over it. You know, B.A. is just not like that. I don't, I don't think he's like that. And he's never been like that with anybody else. Like, look at with Jameis. He did not start talking publicly about Jameis until the very end of the season. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, and so to me, I just, I, I don't think it's a B.A. thing. I think it's a Rojo thing. I agree with you. At first, I thought the same thing. I thought that he had – uh <clears throat> Uh, benched him, but then when they showed him on the sideline, I was like, "Oh, they are." He's going back to that. You know, I'm I'm sad. Yeah, which it sucks because that fumble was not on him. I mean, that was a good play by the defender. It got punched out. Like, what do you do? I mean, that happens to running backs all the time. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's you know, it's not to me. It's not a bad play on Rojo's part, and I hate that he was beating himself up about it. Right. Yeah, you know, we, we had we had we had some screw ups on our parts, on our part. I I want to give a lot of credit to the Dallas Cowboys in uh, in a number of ways that really surprised me. One, it was a great coached game. I mean, they did offensively. They changed their whole style of play to try and beat us, and it almost worked. You know, they because they, they normally they're a run first team that you know they run Ezekiel Elliott up the middle and they started off with that and then they just switched to these outside short passes the whole fucking game just about you know and they were trying all kinds of tricky stuff and everything they were doing whatever they could to beat us and we're gonna see that all year long now you know we are we got the target on our back every team that plays us is gonna try to bring their A plus game to try and beat us. And they're going to have to bring their A-plus game. I think with Dallas, that's probably the best you'll see them play all year. Now, I got to hand it, Dak Prescott played great. Mm-hmm. They they devised a plan to get that ball out of his hand as quick as possible, and he did great. He was making great decisions and, you know, very accurate. And they, I thought it was just very good on Dallas's part. They did everything they could to beat us. They got close. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I don't think we gave them enough credit going into this. For sure, we definitely underestimated them. Yeah, yeah. Yes, definitely. I, You know, from what I saw on film, I was just not impressed with them. And then they came out playing the way they did. I was like, uh-oh. They are they are wanting to beat us. Mm-hmm. They are dead serious about this mess. You know, I think a lot of them had something to prove. You know, Dak Prescott had that he had something to prove. Mm-hmm. Uh, the defense definitely has got something to prove. You know, they got they got to prove that they can stop the run. Dane Quinn's got them out there all jacked up, juiced up, and everything. I thought uh, Lawrence played great. I mean, he was beating oh, yeah. a mess out of Tristan Wirfs all yeah, game. Yeah, Tristan Wirfs did not look good. That's why I want to get this all 22 so I can see all this. I had, I have not seen Tristan Wirfs get beat like that ever. Yeah. And I saw him get beat quite a few times. He got thrown to the ground once. I was like, what? Yeah. So you, you got to give it up to Dallas. I thought they did a great job. 
you know, their defense did, and but their offense especially. They came out with a game plan that was really, I think it might be a blueprint for a lot of teams in the league. You know, they're going to be like, mm-hmm. oh, that's the way to do it. You know, these quick drop backs, three-step drop, throw to the outside, you know, get away from the guys up the middle, our front mm-hmm. seven, you know, trying to. Yeah, beat. you can't do anything with those. Like, why would you try? It's kind of insulting. Yeah. Like you're gonna try to run it up the middle. Yeah, yeah. They had what they have for run yardage. They had they had sixty yards. 60? Ezekiel, yeah. Elliot had thirty three. Hmm. He had eleven carries. Uh, Pollard had fourteen yards, and then Dak Prescott had thirteen. Yeah. See, I mean, that's not their game at all. Yeah, they had eighteen carries total. The three, longest was thirteen yards. Three point three yards per rush we had 3.7 yards per rush now interesting stat for all you stat guys last year ronald jones had 5.1 yards per carry for our team that was a franchise record that's how good we were last year nobody knows that that's not a a, because we broke so many records last year that a rush per average record is buried down at the bottom and nobody even knows it but yeah 5.1 yards per carry average last year like and he almost hit a record. thousand yards. Almost hit like a thousand. Twenty-two yards short. Yeah, huh, that was hurt. I know. So yeah, I thought that they played great. Their defense, you know, got in Tom Brady's face. They did. It, we didn't have any sacks though. We and had one. Oh no, they didn't sack Brady they didn't, at all. No, yeah. they didn't sack Brady mm-hmm. at all. Mm-hmm. And then there was a stat. Oh, hold on, let me find it really quick. So. Tom, this is from Greg Amon. Tom threw 50 passes, had zero sacks. They had zero TFLs. Damn. Out of 64 offensive plays. Wow. So the offensive line, with the exception of Tristan Wirfs, although he did not give up any stats. So yeah. I'm like, mm, is it negligible at this point? Yeah. I mean, he might have got beat, but... Right, if it didn't so, damage anything, I know. it doesn't matter. Yeah, no harm, if no foul. If a tree foul. falls in the right. forest and nobody gets sacked, did it really <laughs> I fall? I know. But we had a lot of screw-ups on our behalf. You know, you mentioned the interception mm-hmm. for Nett. Uh, you know, it, uh, Brady had to lob it. It was a very gentle pass, and it bounced right off of Fournette's hands. I, he jumped up. I don't know if he had to or not. I don't think he did. I think he just did it out of – a reaction because it was coming so slow uh, and it bounced off his hands. We had stuff like that all night. We There was uh, three or four beautiful passes that Brady threw right into open arms of open receivers downfield and they dropped it. So it looks like we're going to have that issue again this year. But man, he was throwing some dimes. Oh my gosh. There was one to Gronk where I was like, I cannot don't know how we did it. Yeah. believe he yeah. did that. Like, I don't even know how that, and there was two defenders right there. Mm-hmm. I mean, it was just spectacular. Yes. Yeah. Gronk had a great game. Yeah. Let's look at his stats. He had eight receptions for 90 yards, two tutties, <laughs> 20 yards long. Oh, he caught every single oh. one of his targets. He had Damn. eight of eight. That one one handed grab was awesome. He, he did it like it was nothing too. Mm-hmm. He just put his big paw out, grabbed it, and <laughs> started running. He did, yeah. He had a phenomenal game. He had a great game. No, I, no other tight ends caught anything, did they? No. I don't think. I don't even remember did seeing Andrew Howard out there. Do we even play them? Do you? I know. Do you have the snap count? Yes, I do. Would love to see who uh, OJ Howard had uh, six snaps. Cameron Brait had eighteen. Wow, what? Yeah. Was he on special teams? No, that's there, offense. Like, offense? Yeah, so I don't recall, I don't recall even seeing out him there. out there. Yeah, me neither. Wow. Uh, so he played 28% of the snaps. O.J. Howard played 9%, and Gronkowski played 88%. Whoa. Okay. And then you had Chris Godwin. He was making plays. But he was dropping mm. balls too, and then that fumble was just like, oh, that fumble. I, that was where I thought we lost it. Yep, yep, me too. And I've got him on fantasy, so I'm like all rooting <laughs> for him. I was like, get in there, get in there, get that yeah. touchdown. Don't stop, don't stop. And then yeah. I was mad that I was like, why didn't you just go down? I know, right? <laughs> stop trying to get those extra yards. I know, but he is like a 
you know, he fights for those yardage. Mm -hmm. It's actually very rare that he makes a play like that where he's fighting for yardage and then fumbles. I can't recall another time of that happening. I'm sure it's happened like once or twice, but it's not, you know, ball aside from the drops, ball security is one of his strengths, I would say. But so that, that was where I thought that we lost it. Thank yeah. God for the defense yeah, showing no up. Yeah. Yeah, I thought they played really good. Uh, Vita Vey, of course. Good Lord. He was just almost he every is play. so ridiculous. He was in. That one play where he, like, carried the lineman with it. It was like yeah. it was like one of those nature documentaries where, like, the baby monkey is hanging off the mom, you know, just hanging <laughs> on by the fur. And she's, like, doing other stuff, like climbing trees and stuff. That's what he was doing. <laughs> But he does that all the time. He will carry alignment to the quarterback. He will tackle you with your center. Yes. No problem. And, and, you know, that one got highlighted because it was really awesome. But he does that like every play. He's, They're saying that lineman was 350 pounds. He, so that was 700 pounds going and tackling mm-hmm. Dak Prescott. Yeah. That's incredible. Uh, but he's, he's, he was close. He was in that, Dak Prescott's face. Just about the whole game. And so was Shaq. So Shaq was ridiculous. there. Uh, yeah, Shaq and, and showed up on the stat sheet. Sue got a few hits on him. Yeah, Shaq, uh, Shaq got a, a sack, right? He was the only one that got a sack. He got a oh. sack, a TFL, and two quarterback hits. So he was doing pretty good last night. Um, Yeah, so... Andrew Adams had a TFL and a quarterback hit. Yeah, nobody else showed up on the stat sheet quite like Shaq Barrett did. Yeah. I saw Sue get a couple of hits on Prescott, but they don't have him with quarterback hits. They don't have Sue with a quarterback hit. He's not even on the stat sheet. I just find that absurd. See, this is why I hate stats. (laughs) I know. You know? I know. (laughs) And all the Sue detractors. Oh, there he is. Wait a minute. He did. He had a tackle. And also a, I know, a quarterback hit. Okay. Yeah, I was going to say, because he, he slammed Prescott one time. Or just, you know, he likes to push quarterbacks. Mm-hmm. So, uh, Golston had a couple of uh, quarterback hits, too. We were, but, I mean, he was getting that ball out quick. Mm-hmm. Matt Prescott was not standing back there and surveying the field. He was definitely, they had the game plan to, let's get this. Just get this ball as far away from that front seven as we can, as fast as we can. I mean, you have to. Yeah, it's a good blueprint. And when you look at our defense, like that's that makes sense. I mean, our mm-hmm. front seven is just matched by no other. Right. The secondary, you're like, okay, we. I, if you're gonna pick your poison, that's who I'm picking. Right. Exactly. It's the secondary. Yeah. So I think we're gonna see a lot of teams try that this year. But you know, a lot of teams don't have Amari Cooper and Gallup. <laughs> CD Lamb. Well, I think you know we'll let you go down the field. It's it's that pound the rock mentality. We'll let mm-hmm. you go down the field, and you can have that eight yards. You can have that six yards. You can have that first down. You're not going any further than maybe field goal. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. it, you know, and there's a good chance that somewhere in there we're gonna get the ball. We're gonna intercept it or yeah, you know. make a play on it. So we had one good interception last night. Who was uh, that? Carlton Davis. Yeah, it was a great interception. 25 yards. And then there was the one where Levante David jumped up and batted it. And Car- it, was it Carlton Davis or Winfield was standing behind No, I think it was Mike Edwards. Was standing behind him. The ball was coming right to him. And David jumped up and tipped it. And Edwards was, you see him on the goal line. He's like, oh, God, that was coming right to me. I was in, like, catch position and everything. Levante was at the top of the stat sheet. 11 tackles, 5 solo, a pass defense, and a quarterback hit. So. Yeah, he played well. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, Devin White you didn't hear much from. It was very strange. Uh-uh, but he was number two on the stat sheet. So. Yeah, he was But it, with 10 tackles. But I think it's because of those two, that's where they were attacking. Well, it was kind of that mid range to the outside, and the linebackers are the first level of defense. Uh huh. They 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 were having to run sideline to sideline. The mm-hmm. linebackers were they were they were constantly going to the edge because they were they were throwing the ball out there. So exactly, much. exactly. So to me, it makes sense that those two had led yeah. the stat sheet. Yeah, yeah. Those are kind of the two you want to lead the stat sheet. Yeah. You don't want your cornerbacks and your safety having the most tackles. <laughs> 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 yeah. <laughs> um, 
Okay, I want to talk about special teams. Oh, my goodness. This was probably the highlight oh of the game, and I'm so happy about this. Finally, our prayers have been answered. Okay, first of all, Bradley Pinion. Pinion. Like, he should have gotten a game, game ball. ball. Game ball. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. He, I don't know. Brady Brady played a very good game. Oh, but yeah. you got to give but Pinion, Pinion huge credit. Okay. I, I wouldn't be mad if he got game ball. Yeah. Me neither. Okay, so he had four punts. 197 yards. His average was 49.3. He had three of the four were inside the 20. Good Lord. Yeah, one with the first one was at the and two. I, yeah, I think two or three of them were yeah. not just inside the 20, but inside the 10. Yeah. It was incredible. Wow. That first punt was Amazing. just beautiful. Amazing. Yeah. Just phenomenal. Oh, so good. Mm -hmm. So excellent which Bradley Pinion probably was the highlight of our special teams last year but everybody else was so bad yeah. like they couldn't stop a return to save their lives mm -hmm. but this year I mean this game it was just you know there was no return attempt whatsoever yeah yeah <laughs> at all yeah it was like the exact opposite of last I year I know so uh amazing and then Jaden Mickens. Mickens. Good Lord, where did he come Jayden from? Jaden Mickens. This is the same guy last year that couldn't get anything. Nothing. He and was... I cringed every time he got the ball last year because mm -hmm. I was expecting a fumble or, you know, him to run 20 yards to lose five. Mm -hmm. And, but gosh, last night, he just phenomenal. He was, he had a kick return. The longest was 41 yards. He had a total of 92 yards on three returns. Damn. Like, amazing. Yeah. Dude. So good. And then uh, two punt returns for 21 yards and a long of 14. So he played lights out. I am so glad. And that strategy using the practice squad. like it was Jay, smart. Yeah. It was so smart. So smart. So I thought Jalen Darden was it. You know, like he's going to be our starting returner. He's a second round pick. Like they can't let him go. They can't cut. You're not going to cut a second round pick. That's ridiculous. Mm -hmm. So they cut Jaden Mickens. So you're like, oh, he lost his job, which you know at the time, rightfully so. And um, then, so for this game, they have Jalen Darden on the roster, but he's inactive. So then you have the opportunity to bring up. Jaden Mickens, and they do that. He starts at return. God, he just played lights out. Mm -hmm. And you have to wonder, is it because he got some legit competition and he was right. like, oh, I can't lose my job like that. And he just plays. Oh, it was amazing. So he was probably, I think special teams was like the highlight of the game for me. It was so such a pleasant surprise. Mm -hmm. And yeah. I just hope that they keep it up all season. You know, I had no hope in the preseason watching them that mm -mm. it was going to look like this. Mm -hmm. I had no idea, no inclination whatsoever that they had gotten it together on special teams. To me, it looked like the same old shit that we saw last year. Yes. But wow, they just played lights out. Kudos to them. Great showing. I can't wait to watch them next week. It's going to be a lot of fun. Yes, it was, it was shocking. It was very shocking. He played different, too. Normally, when he catches the ball, he'll kind of search for a – he'll run kind of left and right looking for an opening. But last night, he was catching the ball and just running straight forward, mm -hmm. you know, and just finding an opening as he was running forward. Uh, and he had time, too. You know, a lot of times last year, he you know, he would get the ball and there would be a guy or two right in front of him getting ready to tackle him. So we had a little bit of time, so it looks like we did good blocking, which was our problem last year on special teams was our tackling and blocking. Mm -hmm. So maybe we maybe we did shore that up this year. That'd be so maybe. nice. Well, I, I can't tell you because I don't have all twenty two. I know, I know. <laughs> Bastards. So Dallas had zero kick returns. They had really, see, yeah. They had fourteen y yards of punt return. Yardage. Zero kick returns and 14 punt returns. Man, we just shut down their special teams. There, I we? know. Oof. Amazing. Didn't what an amazing showing. Mm. And you have to wonder, okay, for me, like their punter is Brian Anger, mm. which of course was our punter. Our I loved him. I did too. I really liked him. I didn't understand why they got rid of him. Right. But 
I wonder if, like, Bradley Pinion, if there's a little bit of um, competition between the old girlfriend and the new girlfriend, you know? I don't <laughs> like, know. Yeah. I know. Like, Bradley Pinion has his best showing uh, against the ex. It's amazing. So, anyway, phenomenal. Very happy with that showing. And then, of course, Ryan Suckup coming in clutch there at the end. Game winner. Yes. Oh, man, I was sweating that. I was sweating that so bad. Oh, my gosh. Okay, and how fucked up is this? So his wife was on... Somebody retweeted his wife. And apparently their son was up and wanted to watch the rest of the... I don't know how young their kid is. Probably school age. And his wife would not let him stay up past halftime to watch his dad. And his dad scores the game winner. I don't know. To me as a mom, like, I'm letting my kids stay. All right, hell, our kid did stay up that late. Yeah, right. <laughs> I know, especially if your your dad's out there. I your know. Playing, I just, he makes I a game-winning kick. Oh, oh, man. Gosh, he would be. I bet he was so upset. I would be. Yeah. Yeah, th- well, they're, they're used to it. I mean, it's to them it doesn't mean anything, I guess. I guess. So they had two missed field goals. We didn't have any missed field goals. Uh, the uh, I thought that they they had a much higher time of possession than we did. Oh my gosh, it was so ridiculous! I can't. It was like a not almost a nine minute difference. So they had the ball thirty four minutes and twenty seven seconds. We had it twenty five minutes and thirty three seconds. Yeah, that's a huge difference. Huge, huge. That's almost a ten minute. <laughs> Difference. I know, right? <laughs> what? Well, we were just getting it and just moving so efficiently down the field. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, we had, let me see, our first drive was a punt, second drive, a touchdown, third drive, punt, fourth drive, touchdown, fifth drive, fumble, sixth drive, interception, seventh drive, touchdown, eighth drive, interception. That was the halftime. Uh, ninth drive was a punt, third drive, uh, tenth drive was touchdown, eleventh drive, punt. 12th drive, fumble, 13th drive, field goal. So, you know, it was punt, touchdown, punt, touchdown, fumble, interception, touchdown, interception, punt, touchdown, punt, fumble, field goal. Uh, we were very, very efficient with everything we did, even our fumbles, it looked like. <laughs> and we didn't play even around. Even the mistakes. <laughs> you know, uh, they, on the other hand, were all over the place. Punt, touchdown, punt, missed field goal, touchdown, field goal, missed field goal, field goal, interception, touchdown, punt, field goal. End of game. Uh, That's a lot of field goals. Yeah. Well, ours were touchdowns. Ours were field goals. Yeah. But, you know, I think we were definitely the better team. I don't think we played. I, I, I'd give us a B, B plus. Yeah. You know. We them. certainly had more rust to knock off than I anticipated. I, I, I think we were we were surprised by their game plan. I think we weren't ready for it. Interesting. Yeah. Defensively, I think they played a lot better than anybody gave them credit for. Mm -hmm. Thought they were going to, but still, I mean, we were just (laughs) those precision strikes. There's, I don't know how anybody could defend against some of those. You can't. You just can't. Jesus, how do you even do that? So, not upset about that. There. Hope to see that going forward. I know. Continue on. I know. Oh, uh, one quick thing about Jaden Mickens. Apparently, his agent tweeted that he's earned a promotion back to the Bucks' fifty-three man roster. Oh, so Jalen so Darling. I hope that he did. So he, whose spot is he taking? Probably SMB will go on IR. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. okay. Uh, so we got. Uh, See, Jade Macon's coming up. He's going to make the roster. Uh, so we're going to be short in quarterback depth. Mm-hmm. Might have to go out and get somebody. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know. But, yeah, that was a, that was a scary-looking injury. I thought for sure his season was done. I know. Me too. I did too. But then uh. you told me today, AB, or BA came out and said, uh, it's just a dislocated elbow. I was like, no way. There's I know, no there's way. There's no freaking way. Went back and watched it, and I was like, oh, okay, yeah, a dislocated elbow. It just <laughs> looked really, really scary. Like awful. It looks so bad. Yeah. Oh, and strange thing about that, you know, I, I went, 
uh, I was watching the game, having to endure all the commercials and all that crap. But I wanted to get to that point so I could clip it, the, the video clip. So it came up, and I was like, I, I had my play sheet out, and I knew it was coming up. So I recorded the play, and then they that they showed the replay because it was an interception. You know, they didn't point out S and B at the time. They didn't even know he was hurt. And so I caught that, recorded that. And then they said, Oh, there's somebody hurt on the field. And they showed S and B laying there and they were like, okay, uh, we're, we're going to take a commercial break. And we'll come back on the game pass. They came back from the commercial break. It was, it was very strange they cut out the next three plays. The next, the three plays after that were gone, and they didn't show the replay of SMB's arm. You know, because on the broadcast version when we were watching it, they showed it again. Because I was telling you, I was like, man, you got to watch this. Because he, you know, I'd saw him on the touchdown thing that his arm was messed up. I was like, we get, and then I saw it, uh, and you weren't watching. I was like, dude, you got to watch this, and you watched it, and it was like, uh. well, but, we had it on two. They, it, was it was on Ralph's delay. computer and then on the TV in our living room. And Ralph mm. was watching both, but there was kind of a delay. So his computer, he would see the play first and yeah. then it would come up on the TV. Well, I love doing that it, because I get to watch it and then I get to watch it again replayed like right after. I hate it though. You hate I it because I'm your always. reaction and I don't know what's going to happen. <laughs> I'm mixing it up though because I'll. But then he does try to trick me. I do all the time. I'll be like, oh no. So what I do is I go on Twitter and I see what everyone's saying. So then I get the spoiler before he can spoil it. I spoil your spoiler. Yeah, the battle of spoilers. <laughs> so anyhow, it appears that on Game Pass, they cut out the replay of them showing SMB's arm. And I don't know if they did it because it was so gnarly or whatever. But I'm like, what? And, and when they cut it out, it appears that they cut out the next three plays, too. So there's three plays after that play that are totally missing off the broadcast version on game pass they're i tell you they're screwing so it up so bad this year yeah but that was if a they very got a bunch of interns running the company probably probably did you hear that their right tackle lyle collins today got suspended for five games for peds no I didn't know like that. how the hell did that not come out yesterday Maybe they tested him after the game. Well, then I saw another tweet where they said it's because he missed tests. Ah. Uh, he missed tests. Yeah, okay. But they're suspending him five games. Damn. Yeah. That's insane. But how does that only come down the day after you play the season the, opener? The day after, yeah. Right. Like, that's some BS. Got to keep him in there to keep Shaq uh, Barrett on the yeah. leash. Yeah. From murdering Dak Prescott. <laughs> <laughs> it was Tom Brady's 300th game last night. Really? I didn't know that. And I think Gronk threw his 87th touch or caught his 87th touchdown. I vaguely remember hearing that. I think. So. Um, yeah, definitely not what I expected from this game. No, we had our picks. You had picked thirty-eight seventeen bucks, mm -hmm. and I went forty-two twenty-four bucks. Whoa! So, what was the final score? Twenty-nine 24, to thirty-one. Twenty-nine thirty-one. Uh huh. I was closer for their score. I said twenty-four. I was closer for our you got score. 29. Yeah. 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 I figured we'd score a lot more. We would have scored a lot more if our receivers would have caught the ball. I know. That was annoying. It looks like that's going to be an issue again this year. I mean, not that we're not going to be able to win games, but we're just not going to win games with as many touchdowns as we want because our receivers keep dropping the ball. There was like three or four, not even more than that, that were laid right in their hands and it just bounced right out. Oh, it was so annoying. How nice is it, though, to have a quarterback where you go, oh, we're getting the ball back with 115 left in the fourth quarter. Mm -hmm. Like, we're going to win we're this. We're going to win this, yeah. yeah. How nice is that? Very nice. I like it. I do, too. I thought that was a mistake on Dallas's part to score, actually. Yeah. I thought they were just going to go, you know, just run as much clock as they could and kick field goal. But uh, they, they threw a pass on their first play when they were in field goal range. With uh, like a minute 50 left, we had three timeouts. 
And on their first play, they threw a pass and it was incomplete. I was like, oh, that really screwed you guys. Mm-hmm. You know, because they were in a position where they could have run the clock out. Yeah. You know, if they would have gotten a first down. They should have. Yeah. And they uh, they screwed up by throwing the damn pass at incomplete for first play. It was like, uh, stop the clock, you big dummies. But, yeah, the refs were horrible. That was Hockley's crew. Yeah, that's Sean Hockley. Sean the Hockley. Son. The son of. Not Ed. Which is so funny because we were talking about the, the Peyton Manning. You know, I watched Peyton Manning's dad play, Archie, in New Orleans. Watched Peyton play, watched his younger brother play, and we're probably going to end up watching his son play, right? His son is, isn't he in college? No, his son's, like, young. Like, well, maybe we'll probably 10 or 11. I know. Yeah. We'll probably end up watching him play. But Absolutely. That, that's how it is with the refs, man. I'm like, here, we're, we're on second generation refs now, mm-hmm. you know? Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's like we're probably going to end up watching his son yeah. ref a game one day. Makes you feel old. <laughs> Are you sure Manning's – somebody's kid's slinging the ball around in college right now. Well, there's a bunch of them, but it's all and like Michael Irving's son, uh, Mary Sanders' son, the, well, kind of Pitt- that era. Michael Pittman's son is a wide receiver yeah. in the league. Mm-hmm. That's crazy. He has been. Ugh. Anyhow, yeah, don't have a whole lot of notes. I didn't take any notes last night because I just wanted to sit down and enjoy the game, although I didn't sit down for the whole game. No, you didn't. Uh, a pace and drink. Smoke. <laughs> Did all that. Didn't sit down. But I didn't take notes. And then, you know, I was going to take notes today on the rewatch, but I just couldn't do it, guys. So Sunday, hopefully, hopefully they'll have all 22 come up next week, maybe. Oh, gosh. I'm, I just don't think they're going to do it. I, don't, I, I don't think either. they're doing a bait and switch. We're canceling the service if they do that. Oh, yeah. Most protest. definitely. That's the, reason, that's the only reason why I hit the service. Yeah. So, uh, we'll, we'll probably have more detailed, you know, when they get the condensed version up, me and Molly will sit down and watch it together and try to get some we'll shots. We'll focus, of, like, for real this time. Yeah, you know, take notes. You were, you were mocking, but I'm dead serious. And so, we'll have more of a breakdown and so, some more uh, analysis more in-depth analysis, probably hopefully Sunday on our podcast. But we're also going to watch the let's see Carolina's playing the Jets. The Jets, Ooh, what Ugh. a horrible game! That's I don't want to watch that. But it is Sam Darnold going up against his old team. Oh, yeah, okay. there's that storyline. Yeah, storyline. And Saints are playing. Hold on, let me. I got the ESPN up. Okay, Philly is playing Atlanta in Atlanta. The birds. The birds. Dirty bird. Bird bowl. Yeah. And Green Bay and New Orleans. So that should be a good game. Oh. That's Sunday at 425. We'll see how Aaron Rodgers does. I, I just don't understand why you would want to play on his team. He's acted like he doesn't want to be there. All that good stuff. It's going to be interesting to see how that plays out throughout the year. Mm-hmm. You know. Hopefully. Hopefully it won't play out well at all. <laughs> So that's what we're going to be doing Sunday. We're going to be watching the New Orleans Green Bay game, the Atlanta Philly game, and the Carolina Jets game. Mm-hmm. So we got a full day of football. We sure do. I love sun. I love football Sundays. Oh yeah, I love it. Yeah. I don't. You know, we can do a podcast maybe, but I just love my Sunday. Like yeah. No, football we'll probably, all day. We'll probably do it Monday morning. Okay. Yeah. No, because cool. you, you know I'm going to be a little tipsy. <laughs> When has that ever stopped you? That's true. That's true. All right. Anything else? No, I think that does it. Okay. All right, guys. We are one and zero oh. right now. We are defending Super Bowl champions, and we are <laughs> we are top in the league. Oh yes. yeah, we sure are. Nobody has a better record than us right now. That's right. Oh, uh, uh, and uh, we could keep that up all year. Yeah, yeah. and Dallas is last in the league. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Ah, somebody owes me money too. I gotta, I gotta text him, get my money. Oh, yeah. All right, uh, it's gonna wrap it up for us, guys. Till next time. Go, Buck.